Next, we're gonna look at the use of the binary heap data structure to implement a clever sorting algorithm known as heap sort. So here's the basic plan. What we're gonna do is, uh, we have our end keys, and we'll have them in an array. We'll uh, view that array uh, as eventually being a max heap. Uh, so what we have to do first is to uh, rearrange the keys in the array uh, to heap order it. Uh, so just make it so that uh, every key uh, is larger than its two children. And for example, the largest of all the keys is at the root. Uh, and then the next phase would be to take that heap ordered uh, <coughs> array uh, and get, get it to be a sorted result in, in place. Uh, and again, the uh, heap is stored in the array with the first key position one, uh, next two position two and three and like that. Uh, so the end result would be like that with uh, no keys in the heap, but uh, all the keys in the array in sorted order. So it's a little exercise in abstraction. Part of the array is the heap, part of the array uh, is the sorted subarray, and eventually uh, we bring it down to the whole thing being sorted. It's very little code beyond the uh, basic heap code that we've looked at uh, can get this implemented. That's called heap sort. Uh, let's take a demo of uh, how heap sort works in our example. Uh, so uh, the idea is we're gonna use a, a bottom-up method uh, so all that means is we start with an array in arbitrary order, and then uh, we're gonna work from the bottom up to make sure that it's heap ordered. Uh, well, all the uh, nodes with no children are heap ordered. They're only of size one. The first one we have to worry about uh, is this one here. Uh, the, root, the root, uh we haven't examined yet. Uh, its children are heap ordered, so it's a small heap of size three. Uh, that may not be heap order. In this case, it's not because uh, one of the children is larger. So that's where uh, things are gonna start. We have a lot of one node heaps, uh, and then uh, we're gonna have to uh, perform the sync operation on this one at node five. That's, in this case, just exchange it with this parent. And then uh, proceeding in that way, moving bottom up, or moving from right to left, uh, the next thing we do is, uh, then we have a, a three node heap that's heap ordered, and we're fine. Uh, now we'll move over to the T, uh, and again, that's the root of a three node heap that's heap ordered except at the root. Uh, we may need to fix it with the sync operation. Uh, in this case, uh, nothing is required because it's larger than its children, so we have a three node heap. Uh, and then we move one more to the left. Now we're looking at the R. Again, root of a three node heap uh, may or may not be heap ordered. We do have to do the sync operation. In this case, that brings the X up. Uh, three node heap, uh, now we go to two. Now that's the root of a seven node heap. We know the two three node heaps that are the children are heap ordered, uh, but we may have to correct uh, the heap ordering at the root, uh, so we do a sync on two. Uh, and that's gonna involve uh, exchanging with the T, because T is larger than O, uh, and exchanging with the P, because P is larger than O. Uh, now uh, that uh, heap is a seven node heap that's all heap ordered. Uh, and then the last thing is to do the root of the whole thing. Uh, and again, the, now the two subtrees are heap ordered. That's what we mean by bottom up. We took care of the heap ordering from the bottom up. Uh, and so we'll do a sync on the S and uh, bring it into uh, heap ordering. So that's uh, with just a few exchanges, we got that uh, whole array heap ordered. Uh, and now what we wanna do is uh, take advantage of the heap ordering in the array uh, to do a sort. Uh, and the concept is very simple. Uh, right away, we have the maximum element in the array right at the root, and uh, we want that to be at the end, so that's what we're gonna do is just put it at the end. We exchange the element at the root with the last element, pull it off the heap, uh, and then that's our example. We might have violated the heap order condition at the heap right now, so now we have to do a sync operation uh, on the E. Uh, and so uh, it's larger than uh, it's both children, and the larger the two children is T, so we promote the T. Uh, and the P is the larger the two children, promote that. Uh, and then finally the E comes down to the bottom. So now uh, that's one step in the sort. We got the largest element off. Now the next largest element in the array is now at the root of the heap. So we're gonna do the same thing, exchange it with the last element in the heap. Uh, 
then now the T is in its final position uh, in the sorted array. Uh, we take it off the heap. Uh, so now uh, we've got uh, a heap with nine elements and two of the elements in the array are already in their final position. Uh, and now this one's not heap ordered, so we have to exchange it with the largest of its two children. Uh, in this case, that involves uh, promoting the S and the R. Uh, now it's heap ordered. Uh, so that's the end of uh, two steps in heap sort. Uh, and then we just keep going, pulling off the largest element from the heap, exchanging it with the uh, element in the heap in the largest position in the array, uh, which brings that element into its final position in the sorted array, uh, and then uh, <coughs> adjusting the heap ordering with the sync operation. Uh, so that E again uh, is going to come down, and now it only goes down one step in this case. Uh, so now R exchanges with uh, M, and it's in its final position. And you can see down at the bottom the large elements in the array filling in in their final position uh, in the uh, left part of the array is representing the heap. The R goes off the heap, uh, do the sync operation on the M, uh, and now uh, we have a heap ordered array. Uh, so now uh, do the P, exchange that with the A, uh, take it off the heap, uh, do the sync operation on the A. Uh, now we're going to do the O, uh, exchange that with the E, uh, take it off the heap, do the sync operation on E which involves promoting the larger of its two children until it gets to the bottom or a place where it's larger than both its children. Uh, so now we have uh, just five elements left. Uh, we'll uh, get the M, uh, do heap ordering on the uh, heap of four, and that only involves one exchange. Now we get the L, uh, A exchange with the larger of its two children while they're both the same, so it goes with the left one. Uh, that's a heap of size three. Uh, pull off the first E, uh, it's already heap ordered, pull off that E, uh, and now we're left with only uh, one element in the heap, uh, and it's in the first position, so there's nothing to do. Uh, so with uh, a <coughs> series of N uh, exchange and then sync operations, uh, we pull the sorted array out of the heap. Okay, this uh, slide summarizes the code for uh, heap construction, and it, as you can see, it's a one-liner. Uh, we go backwards through the heap, uh, starting at n over two, because the uh, n over half of the rightmost half of the array is just little heaps of size one. Uh, we just go backwards, doing a sync, uh, starting at k. Uh, so that's the first uh, piece of code for uh, heap ordering an array with arbitrary values. Uh, and then uh, these diagrams uh, summarize uh, the <coughs> uh, <coughs> uh, sync calls that, that we just went through in the demo, uh, starting at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, as you can see, only 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5 exchanges are needed to bring this uh, into heap ordering. Uh, then the second pass, uh, again, that's only uh, a two-liner. We exchange uh, the first element with the one at the end and then decrement the size of the heap uh, and then do uh, sync operations. Uh, and these diagrams uh, summarize the sync operations uh, that uh, we showed uh, in the demo. Uh, on an ever smaller heap, uh, we continue just performing sync operations uh, at the root until we get a completely sorted array. Uh, so, uh, given uh, the sync implementation, uh, we had a one-liner for the first pass and a, a three-liner for the second pass. Uh, so that gives a complete uh, implementation of heap sort uh, with the code that we've given so, forth, so far. Uh, there's one uh, little detail. Uh, when you're sorting an array, of course, uh, position zero uh, comes into account. Uh, and we've been uh, building our heaps uh, from position one, uh, so, but we can take care of that in the less and exchange methods uh, by just decrementing the indices in those methods to uh, have it work as if the array were zero through n. Uh, and that's a little implementation detail, but otherwise uh, this is a, a fine uh, sort implementation uh, that uh, actually is uh, very uh, little code, and, and it's got a place uh, in, uh, <coughs> in the theory of algorithms that I'll talk about in just a second. 
this is uh, just another trace uh, without the uh, data structures shown to just uh, show in our standard way uh, the elements in black and red are the ones that are touched and the elements in gray are the ones that are not touched at all. Uh, and to just show that this thing gets the sort done uh, with uh, touching uh, relatively few elements, that's a trace. Uh, let's look at an animation. Uh, animation of heap sort is interesting to watch. Uh, so uh, the construction of the heap happens in a blink uh, and now it's pulling off the largest elements uh, moving from right to left. Uh, so again, a very efficient way to get a sorting job done. Uh, so what about the mathematical analysis? Uh, well, uh, mathematical analysis uh, for the heap sort part is pretty easy. Uh, n times, we're doing a sync operation, uh, and the size of the heap is at most log n, so it's n log n. Uh, the construction actually, it turns out, uh, although it's a little more complicated to prove, uh, that it always uses just a linear number of compares and exchanges. Uh, and that's an interesting result in itself. You can build a heap from n values in linear time. And then uh, in n log n more time, you can sort from that heap. Uh, and that's significant, be significant because it's the first sorting algorithm that we've seen that is both in place and manages to get the sorting job done uh, with guaranteed n log n compares. Merge sort doesn't do that, it takes linear extra space. Quick sort doesn't do that, it takes quadratic time in the worst case, even though uh, we make that uh, unlikely by random shuffling, uh, it still takes uh, quadratic time in the worst case. Uh, but heap sort uh, does both. Now there's more complicated versions of merge sort and quick sort that can do this in theory, uh, but heap sort is a pretty simple algorithm uh, that gets both done. So if on a job interview somebody asks you what's an in-place sorting algorithm that's guaranteed n log n, uh, your answer is going to be heap sort. Uh, now in practice, uh, heap sort's actually not used that much uh, for a couple of reasons. And they might ask you these uh, on your job interview too. Uh, first thing is the inner loop is uh, longer than quick sort. So like merge sort, there's more things to do in the inner loop. Uh, there's that compare the two children bigger and then, then compare, there's, there's, so there's two compares that get done uh, and, and, and log n times and then there's some uh, that array index arithmetic. Uh, the other thing which is uh, probably more significant on modern machines is that uh, the references to memory are all over the place when uh, it's a huge array. So it's uh, not a good algorithm for uh, a situation where there's caching, which is almost everywhere nowadays. It doesn't have local memory reference like quicksort does. It's always referring to something that's nearby something else that it uh, just referred to. So if a big block of things comes into memory, uh, there's no more extra cost. Whereas heap sort is going to look uh, far away from the current place as it goes down the tree, and that makes it slower in a lot of situations. Uh, and the other thing is it's not stable. Sometimes people choose to use merge sort in practice because of the stability, uh, but heap sort's not stable uh, for the usual reason uh, that it does uh, long distance exchanges that uh, might uh, bring uh, items that have equal keys uh, back out of order. Uh, so that, that, that's our uh, full summary of uh, sorting algorithms uh, to it completes our treatment of sorting algorithms with heap sort. Uh, and this is just adding the heap sort line uh, to the table. Uh, it's in place. Uh, we don't use any uh, auxiliary array. Uh, it's not stable, but it's worst case guaranteed time is proportional to n log n, as well as the average and, and the best. Uh, this is uh, not a uh, trivial result, but it's also uh, the case. Uh, so it's n log n guarantee uh, in place, uh, but it's not stable, uh, and we still have uh, the hope that someday somebody will develop uh, a simple in place stable worst case uh, n log n algorithm, uh, but we're not quite there yet. And that completes our treatment of sorting algorithms uh, with the heap sort algorithm.